Hello everybody, today I'm going to be showing you a fun challenge, and the challenge is how many ways are there to make change for a dollar, and I'm going to show you the code that I wrote for it, and I'm just going to explain uh, sort of what I was thinking when I made uh, my code. So anyway, uh, it's pretty simple, so like my, my program is pretty simple, so I was hoping this would be a cool enough algorithm, maybe a simple enough algorithm to show you guys. So yeah, first thing I did was I figured I should probably just try and list all of the ways to make change for a dollar. And I'll do it in my own intuitive way and I'll just start listing them. So the first way to make change for a dollar is with a $1 coin. <laughs> and then I figured, okay, I should start with um, the biggest denominations first, so that's why I start with the dollar. We could make a dollar with four quarters. And <clears throat> I also figured, you know, if I were to say, uh, you know, five, five, ten. Okay, that's obviously the same as ten, five. So uh, in order to make sure all of our answers are nice and unique, we're going to make it so that all of the big numbers are on the left. Because uh, that's just going to make things nicer. So uh, 25, 25, 25. Then we split up the last 25 with a 10. And then we have room for a 10 and then a 5. Um, and yeah, I just keep on going like this where I keep on breaking it up into smaller pieces. So the 5 is now 5 pennies. Um, but then after that we have to break the 15 cents up into five nickels. Anyway, this is sort of the way that I came up with for solving this problem. But how do we put it into code? So I'm just gonna show you my code right over here. Internal storage. So it's really short. Really, the actual code is from line 3 to 13. And even this line here isn't really part of the function. It's just there for fun. For, um, well, I'm just going to run this program so you can see. Uh, basically, this is a function here. Uh, as you can see, it's called do, because <laughs> I'm creative here. And it says do 100, 100. All right, let's just run it and see what happens. 293. So that is the top number there, is the number of ways to make change for a dollar, considering you, there are such things as 50 cent coins. I originally thought my program wasn't working because I was watching a video, and they said 293, but when I ran it, I got 243. Actually, I got 242 because I didn't even use a dollar uh, here in... Canada, we don't have 50 cent coins. So my answer should have been 243, but anyway, this is how to make change for a dollar <clears throat> with only 25 cents, 10 cents, uh, a quarter, a dime, a nickel, and a penny. Anyway, let's just take a look at this code and see how it works. So it's a recursive function, and the first argument is the quantity which you want to make change for in pennies <clears throat> and the second quantity is the second argument is the number uh, the the nickel uh, how do I say this the, the the denomination that's why I call it dens the denomination the largest denomination you would like to use um, so if you put in 25 here then it will not use a denomination bigger than 25 to make change uh, for n. Okay, so first off, uh, this is the base case, uh, is what they call it in recursive functions. n is equal to 0. There is one way of making change for 0 cents. Okay. Um, then I start off with a total. I'm going to start adding up numbers or whatever. And so, like, let's just take a look over here. Basically, what my program does is it starts off with 25. And then it just, okay, this is going to be some weird 
this is going to be with some weird notation, just ignore it, but um, basically it's going to do, maybe I'll use the word do, since that's what I called it, 75. So it's going to say, okay, well, one of the ways, with, with 25 at the beginning, we just have to calculate how many ways there are to make change for 75 cents. And then we do the same thing for um, 90 cents. And the same thing for, this is basically the algorithm. It recursively calls itself several times, like so. And I think you see the pattern here. But yeah, I messed up already. 95. It's not literally 25 plus do. I just don't know how to write this. Um, oh yeah, I should just say total plus equals. Because <laughs> that's what's happening. So yeah, it's basically going to run total plus equals. Damn, what's going on here? Do. So just replace this 10 with, uh, with that. And here we have a 99. I really thought I could explain this, but I think it's uh, I think it makes sense. Anyway, it basically just gets the rest of the problem and calls the function recursively on that. Um, and because I said that the denomination should always be decreasing in the rightward direction here, I decided, um, and it's 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 essential for sure because. Otherwise, we would end up getting, you know, different orderings of the same way of making change. The order that the coins come in shouldn't matter. And so that's why we're only trying to count a single ordering in this case. Um, so that's why we have to make sure that we're not using a denomination that is larger than the previous value, the previous denomination which is what we call it with. So we say, um, for example, if we pass in 100 here, n is equal to 0, it's just going to go through there. Total is equal to 0. It's going to start with our biggest denomination, which is 25 cents for den and dens. If den is greater than previous, uh, we pass, we called in with 100, so it is definitely bigger. And denomination is bigger than n. Uh, continue. Okay, right, so it's going to go... It's going to pass this test. It's not going to continue. And then we're going to call do on 75 because 100 minus 25 and 25. So now it's not going to use any denominations bigger than 25 for the rest, for the rest of that call. And then it's going to add, uh, do the same thing with 10. It's going to loop around again. And it's going to say total plus equals... 100 minus 10, and the denomination would be 10. So 90 and 10. It's going to call do with 90 and 10. And now, if it does it starting with 10, then it's only going to use denominations less than 10 for the 90 cents. And uh, anyway, this works. This works quite nicely. 242. So that's the number of ways of making change for a dollar if you only have quarters, dimes, nickels, and pennies. Okay, well, you may wonder what's this global C, C plus 1. This is just a counter uh, for counting how many times this function was ran. So it's a performance counter. And as you can see, it gets called... Okay, wait, which one gets printed first? C, then prod. Okay, so 6,962 times. Okay, well, that's actually pretty terrible. Oh, I did this. Uh, we're going to ignore the prod. No. I'm just going to do 100, put a little temporary fix in here. Okay, that's correct. All right. So 6,962 is the number of times this function was called. And uh, that's too many times, okay? We're trying to make something that's performant, okay? 
And just to compare it to the brute force way, there is a brute force way of solving this problem that's even more brute force than my way. And that would be to do something like for P, uh, P will stand for pennies, for P in range, uh, let's say 100. Oh God. So we'll start with pennies, because why not? And for N, for nickels, in range 20, because there's 20 nickels and a dime. <laughs> and for, uh, what's the other one? Quarter, dime, in range 10, because there's 10 dimes in a dollar. And for, what's it called? Four. Anyway, basically, you can see what's going on here. I'm going to go through all possible combinations of pennies, nickels, and dimes, add them together, and just check if it adds up to 100. If it adds up to 100, then we add one to the counter for ways of making a dollar. And this way, um, basically, I'm just going to... I made this function here. Prod is going to be the number of times that the inner loop here would run. The inner loop here uh, would run, and so that's a measure of performance. So basically, if I did it the most dumb brute force way possible, then the inner loop would run this many times, which is it looks like 80,000. But my function only runs 6,962 times. That's still not good. So we're going to ruin the elegance of this uh, program a little bit by optimizing it. And I'm going to show you my optimization, which will be found here. Open internal storage documents, change mm -hmm. counter two. Okay. So this is the same thing, except basically what I do is, you know, when this program gets called with nine, with uh, parameters, like let's say if I called do, uh, let's say I call do 99 one. This is going to try and make change for 99 cents uh, with one penny, using only one penny. And it means that this function is going to get called 100 times. Or another example is if it was to just be 5, then this function is going to get called 5 times. But as it turns out, we frequently need to know this exact parameter is 5, 1 and uh, many other arguments will get called many times and this function is constantly recomputing the same result over and over again with the same arguments and the same output so my optimization idea is to just save the answers so instead of before where we just did total plus equals do n minus den and den what we do is we say, we're going to save the uh, arguments, which are n minus den and den, in a tuple. Yeah, I know I have great naming schemes. Okay. Anyway, we save it into a tuple. And we say, if the tuple is in this map, okay, well, a map is a dictionary. It's a Python thing. But basically, a map is, uh, I, ho I would hope you know what it is. It's, uh, you put a key in there, and uh, it gives you the value. <laughs> All right, looks like I'm not explaining what a map is. Um, but basically, it's like a table, okay? You can add entries to the table, uh, and you can find values by giving it a key. So, you know, in this case, the key is going to be this tuple or tuple or whatever you want to call it, of arguments of n minus den and den. And the value will be the value of the function. So basically, I say if... If I've already computed it, as in if tuple is in map, then total plus equals map at tuple. So we're going to put in the key, and this map at tuple is going to return the value of the function for those arguments. And otherwise, we just say value 
is equal to the function. We're going to actually have to commute, compute the function because we, we don't have it in our map. And then we're going to add it to the value as total as usual. And then we're going to add it to the to, to the map. We're going to add this tuple value uh, key value pair to the map. And now we never have to compute it again. So many times, uh, for example, like I said, 5, 1 will be passed in as arguments and 10, 1. And we don't want to keep on recomputing this whole thing. Uh, so we just save it in a table, basically. And uh, if you remember, when I ran this, C, which is the second number there, 6,962. So the function is called 6,992. Uh, wait, anyway. It's called over 6,000 times. Um, and then I'm going to print this thing here. We get the same result. Remember, I'm using uh, bigger denominations now. That's why it's 293. It is correct. But now the function only runs 140 times. That is like a crazy... That's like at least... 20 times import improvement it might be 30 i don't know um so that's like a great improvement just by saving the results in a map and uh especially compared to the number of ways that it would be uh what's it called if we did the brute force and what i'm gonna do is just demonstrate how effective this is by turning up this number so for making change for a dollar, what about making change for ten dollars? How many ways are there of doing that? Ten thousand, or sorry, one thousand cents. So this is the original way where we, and as you can see, it it can't do it. It it might be able to do it eventually, <laughs> but uh, it's taken a while. I think I did this before and I gave up on waiting for it. I only waited for like a minute, but. Anyway, I can't do it. <laughs> so here's the result when we save our answer. It's almost instant. <laughs> it's a huge difference. It now is only running 1,468 times. And we see the result is there are 2 million ways, 2,103,596 ways of making change for $10. Uh, so I thought that was pretty cool, really simple optimization I did there. And if you're a programmer, you might think this is kind of cool. Um, you might even think this is cool. Recursive functions are, I'm normally, uh, I'm normally of, like the kind to avoid a recursive function. But uh, let's be real, like that this is pretty as heck. I mean, look here, if I get rid of global C and C plus one, this function... The body of this function is straight up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 lines of dead simple code. Uh, and it's able to calculate that. Even with the brute force ways, literally more lines of code. So I'd say that's pretty cool. Uh, and for just adding a few more lines of code, maybe like 5 here, 4 or 5 lines of code, we can get a huge performance increase so that's pretty great and uh that is me making change for a dollar thank you for watching have a good one